But rendering and viewport features in update 2. Uh, the bitmap random tiling is one of the interesting new things. Here's some uh, bitmaps applied to a bunch of blocks. They obviously look completely identical. If you use the bitmap random tiling and turn on randomize, well, uh, yes, it adds a random offset. Same to all of them. So how's that useful? Well, of course, if we drive the seed from the node ID, we'll see that now they will be all be different. So now when I tweak the offset, they all offset in different directions. I can do things like tweak the scale uh, to have different scales or even set a rotation. Let's just set 360 degrees like this. Kaboom. And now we have all random rotations and scalings and whatnot, and they now look different. This is really good if you have like a continuous uh, wood texture and you want to shift and rotate it around and scale it for different. You can also tweak uh, like the hue shift and saturation shift. So now you see we have subtly different colors on each of them. So that's between each block, but what about within a uh, texture? I scaled it down 25% and now it's clear. Yes, they're all rotated different, but they all look the same. Uh, it's all repeating within the object. To fix that, we turn on the UV-based randomization and boom. So what is happening here? Well, I can show it more clearly by turning up the saturation difference. You see, it's broken it into blocks and each block has separate randomization. I can change the size of the blocks. Yeah, but this is still blocks. That's not terribly useful, right? Straight lines and everything. Well, there's a wiggliness parameter and the wiggliness parameter actually makes the block edges non-straight. So now it's looking a lot more interesting. And if we put back a sane uh, saturation variation, we actually have something that is kind of useful still. We can change the scale of some and now everything is very different and the repeat is almost gone. However, we still see this boundary between the lines. And while we can change the scale of the wiggliness and try to tweak it, there will always be some line that is visible. So there's a fuzziness setting. We can turn that up and now they fade into each other. Be gentle with this, and not too much because it will be perceived as blurry otherwise. So if we look at how this actually renders in Arnold, because it's all viewport, of course, it renders exactly the same. No surprises there. But what about multiple textures? Now we have just the, the uh, diffuse color randomized. What about things like normal maps? Well, let me take the normal map and choose it. And remember, you have to turn off all color variations when you deal with normal maps or otherwise you break them. You connect it up to the normal map input and it seems to work fine, except if we're really careful and we move the light around, we see this weird twirling effect that looks like some expensive IKEA wood material. It looks kind of wrong and the shading isn't right. Well, if we click the is a normal map checkbox and now we see it looks right. Turns out when you rotate normal maps, you need to actually rotate the diversion vectors in the map for it to look right. So now we have the normal map, but what if we want to have an other thing like the albedo texture again that looks the same? Well, we actually use a regular bitmap, uh, OCL bitmap, and now you see, well, this is just tiling, it's back to the beginning. Well, all we need to do is to take the UV output of the random one and connect it to the input, and boom, now that bitmap has exactly the same randomization as our normal map one. And since the normal map one is the one that needs special math, that's the one you use to run the randomizer on. And then you can just copy the other one for your roughness and your ambient occlusion in this case. And kaboom, we have really nice material that is looking very random from completely non-random textures. And if you want to change anything about randomness, you just go into the normal map one and change the settings, playing with scales or whatever, and you can change stuff. So it's pretty powerful. Here are a few examples of various textures downloaded online and run through the bitmap random tiling. And you see it's much more organic. We have this circuit board, we have this uh, gravel texture and the stone we were working on. And they all look uh, a lot less repetitive than it would always do. 
and it, it's a very powerful feature. Again, of course, rendering it in Arnold gives you, surprise, exactly the same result. And the same will go for any renderer, like V-Ray, Corona, etc. would render this no problem. A few other small improvements. The uh, regular randomized bitmap you used to run about multiple textures now has an optional opacity input for each of them. Plus, it also supports rotating normal maps. There's a new PBR mixer you can use to mix two sets of PBR inputs into a single one to make super pretty developer art like this. And the random by index that we always had has a new option to randomize by component. By default, it interpolates between the two values. Check per component, it interpolates each component between the two values. Here it obviously ends up being all colors, but if we take a 70s kitchen kind of look from brown to mint green, we now have each of the component randomizing between them. We uncheck it back to the old way, it's just a linear fade between the two. Whichever you need is whatever you'll use. The curves shader made some people confused. They wanted to make gradients, but it's intended to do a separate ramp for red, green, and blue, like a color correction. So we made a new color curve gradient, which does take UVs as inputs, which you can tile and rotate this or whatever you want to get that behavior. Uh, the first, the old one takes colors and does a per component. This one takes UVs and you can choose UV or take some other single input from something else and just make the gradient out of that. So if we connect the luminance to here, we get the brightness of the image to turn into the gradient. That's uh, one of the many things in update 2. Bye-bye.